Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to yet another edition of Your Business and Rave TV, and I'm your host, Cindy Aze. Now, today, we're going to be discussing standard operating procedure. Every organization has a unique way it does its things. Every organization has steps it takes to achieve the overall product or service. Today, we're going to be looking at the importance of those steps. We call them standard operating procedures. What are standard operating procedures? How can they be achieved? How can they be developed? How can they be upgraded? These are the things that we're going to examine when it's time for our discussion. And of course, joining me to discuss this is Ms. Isua Okoje. She's the CEO of Leading Ladies Business Institute. She has been doing this for over five years now, and she has been able to upgrade women for for with a number of about 7,500 women in the past five years. So she's quite qualified to take this. But we're going to be discussing this immediately after the business news. So please stay tuned as we take our business news. Welcome back. It's time for business news on your business. On the local scene, Nigerians stuck with cash transactions despite growing digital options. Cash continues to enjoy 80% patronage of all transactions in Nigeria, despite the fact that Nigeria has one of the most diverse digital banking channels in sub-Saharan Africa. Banks have also invested heavily to upgrade their digital banking infrastructure in recent years. These investments, notwithstanding the number of active ATMs, POS, and mobile wallets, are still not enough to cater for the growing bank population in Nigeria. Secondly, system failures and the unending number of failed transactions contribute to customers going back to bank branches. And next, NLNG targets 2022 to begin remarketing trains four to six outputs the Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas PLC will begin remarketing of the second tranche of its LNG trains for five and six from 2022 as one of the consequences of the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemics, which has slowed down the industry and most economies. The company's facility located in Boni Island has six trains with the first tranche being trains one, two, and three. It recently won a final investment decision for its seven train. Tony Atta, the company's managing director, said the company was counting on the pandemic running its full cost before it began marketing its second set of trains. GB Foods completes 20 billion Naira tomato processing factory in Kebi. GB Foods, a global leader in culinary products manufacturing, in partnership with the central bank, Kebi state government, and the Emirates of Yaori, has commissioned its 20 billion naira tomato processing factory in Kebi state. The tomato factory will convert fresh tomatoes in tomato concentrate used for, produ for producing Gino tomato paste and Gino tomato pepper onion paste, while the soya bean will be used to process soya bean oil, which is a critical ingredient for GB foods and Jago Mayonnaise International. British Petroleum to write off up to $17.5 billion after producing oil price forecast. British Petroleum revises assumption for benchmark bread crude oil prices to an average of about $55 per barrel between 2021 and 2020. It will also assume the price of Henry Hop gas at $2.90 per minimum British thermal. In a statement, BP said the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic will accelerate the pace of transition to a low-carbon economy. And lastly, three airlines challenge UK quarantine in court. British Airways, EasyJet, and Ryanair said the quarantine will have a devastating effect on tourism and the wider economy. The airlines want the government to readopt its previous policy where quarantine was limited to passengers from high-risk countries. They described the country's plan to quarantine most incoming travelers as flawed. The quarantine was imposed in a heated debate on whether it will help British efforts 
to stamp down the outbreak or simply stamp out any holes that the tourism industry will recover following months of lockdown. This is the business news. Please stay tuned for Stock Market Report. Stock Market Report for the close of business Tuesday, 16 June 2020. A total of 200.39 million shares were traded on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange in 4,194 deals with a total valuation of 1.59 billion Naira. The All Share Index went down by 0.09% to close at 24,930.88. Equity capitalization stood at 13.01 trillion Naira. For the sectorial indices, the oil and gas index went by 0.57%, the banking index went down by 0.11%, the industrial index went up by 1.03%, the consumer goods index went down by 0.24%, and the insurance index went down by 2.09%. The top gainers include Bois Cement, it gained 0.65 Naira to close at 41.4 Naira, Fitzen gained 0.33 Naira to close at 3.63 Naira. Sky Aviation gained 0.22 Naira to close at 2.95 Naira. Red Star X gained 0.17 Naira to close at 3.8 Naira. And Caverton gained 0.15 Naira to close at 2.19 Naira. The top losers include Flour Meal, it lost 1.4 Naira to close at 19.55 Naira. MTN lost 1 Naira to close at 115 Naira. Ardova lost 0.6 close at 13.75 Naira. CI Leasing lost 0.45 Naira to close at 4.35 Naira. Nimet lost 0.23 Naira to close at 2.0 Naira. For the consumer goods sector, the gainers include Honeywell Flour. They gained 0.07 Naira and Inter Brewery gained 0.05 Naira. The top losers are Flour Meal, it lost 1.4 Naira and Guinness lost 0.05 Naira. For the different sectors, but for the financial services, the three top gainers include UBA, it gained 0.05 Naira, WAPIC gained 0.01 Naira. FCMB also gained 0.01 Naira. The top losers are Ico Insurance, they lost 0.1 Naira. FBN lost 0.1 Naira. Zenith Bank lost 0.1 Naira. For the health sector, the only gainer was Fitzin Pharmaceuticals and it gained 0.33 Naira. The losers are Nimetz, it lost 0.23 Naira. May and Baker, also lost 0.21 Naira. For the oil and gas sector, the only gainer was Japan Oil with a gain of 0 Naira. And the two losers are Adova, it lost 0.65 Naira. O and O also lost 0.07 Naira. On the international scene for the American index, the Dow Jones went up by 1.57%. Nasdaq Composite Index went up by 1.42%. The S&P 500 Index went up by 1.67%. For the European market, the FTSE 100 Index went up by 2.94%. DAX Index went up by 3.39%. And the CSE 40 Index went up by 2.84%. Market, Shanghai Index went up by 1.13%. And the Nikkei index went up by 4.88%. That's all for the stock exchange report for today. What time is it? What time is it? And it's a good morning yeah, to yeah, all our yeah. viewers. Welcome to Morning Wave. Yes, we are ready to start yeah, Monday to yeah. Friday. Check, and this check, is the number one breakfast show, Morning Rain. If my president wants to rule, people are supporting him, telling us stories, which is very wrong. That's what they do. What are you controlling? 
they want to hold on national grid. As a writer, as, a, as an author, you want to you want to strike from the beginning. Welcome to my kitchen. This is your chef, Chef Amaka. If you love to sing, you can be part of the choir. Glad to have you guys join us back this morning on Sport Update on Money Rave. Nigeria today, it seems that uh, we might be having a break in the atmosphere. Do some of them it was never know. when they were sick. Oh, no. no. get, get get this is Morning Rain. Get more information and updates on RaveNG.tv. Follow and interact with us on our social media platform using the handle at Rave TV channel. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Rave TV. Download the Rave TV app on iOS, Windows and Android to view us on the go. Rave TV. So exciting. Human beings are political by nature. Everything we we'll say or do has political coloration. On political lens, we bring experts analyze current issues. This is a serious issue, and laws must be obeyed. The primary element is the welfare and the security of the people. Sometimes it gets controversial, <laughs> and sometimes it is conversational. You cannot come here and embarrass. Political lens. It's all about politics. Showing every Friday, 5 p.m. on the station. Okay, welcome back. This is still your business, and um, I'm Cindy Eze. All right, today we're going to be looking at standard operating procedures. What are those procedures that organizations should be um, looking at? What are those things that they should pay attention to? And of course, how can they document it? How important are those procedures to the sustainability of your businesses? Now, joining me to discuss this via Skype is Ms. Isoa Okoje. She is a professional and she is um, the CEO of Leading Ladies Business Institute. And then, of course, she has been doing this with business women for over five years. So she'll be joining us to discuss this. The phone lines are going to be open. Please endeavor to send in your questions and uh, make your contributions to when the time comes. All right. OK. Ms. Ms. Isoa. OK, let's take a quick break, and then when we'll come back, Ms. Isoa will be joining us. Get more information and updates on RaveNG.tv. Follow and interact with us on our social media platform using the handle at RaveTV channel. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Rave TV. Download the Rave TV app on iOS, Windows, and Android to view us on the go. Rave TV. So exciting.
What time is it? Time is it? And it's a good morning yeah, to yeah, all our yeah. viewers. Welcome to Morning Wave. Yes, we are ready to start. Yeah, Monday to yeah. Friday. Check, and this check, check, is yeah. the number one breakfast show, Morning Rain. If my president wants to rule God, people are supporting him, telling us stories. Which is very wrong. That's what they do. What are you controlling? They want to hold on national grid. As a writer, as, a, as an author, you want to you want to strike. From the beginning. Welcome to my kitchen. This is your chef, Chef Amaka. If you love to sing, you can be part of the choir. Glad to have you guys join us back this morning on Sports Update on Morning Rave. Nigeria today, it seems that we might be having a bit of a break in the atmosphere. The song of them was never when they were sick. Oh, Get issues. Get issues. You sick. This is Morning Rave. You can see as well. Okay, welcome back. This still your business. All right, it's time. Um, our guest is joining us. Miss Isua. Yeah, good morning, Miss Isua. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. hi, JJ. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. And you? Yeah, we couldn't have you in the studio, so I guess um, we, we can do, still do Skype. Sure, absolutely. And it's good to be here with you this morning. Okay, okay. All right, Mrs. Well, let's um, let's go straight to the point. We are looking at standard operating procedures um, this morning, and um, we know that every organization must have it because it's um, basic, because it shows the system or the processes with which that organization will use to achieve the end product, which is, I mean, the end thing, which is the product or the service. So what are standard operating procedures? All right, thank you, Cindy. It's great to be here. Again, all right, standard operating procedures are simply step by step processes, you know, that entrepreneurs need to put in place so that they achieve uniformity and, and accurate productivity as regards their services or their products. All right, now, standard operating procedures usually will range from um, either in human resource or in a uh, procurement or in marketing and sales, you know, it spread, spread across the different aspects of business. Now, one thing I usually tell entrepreneurs is this, if you must, um, you know, establish standard procedures in your business, you must look at all the areas that are critical to quality, we call it CTQ, critical, critical to quality. I hope that answers your question. Okay, so for standard operating procedures now, do I need to, as an employer of labor, do I need to train my employees on those processes that I need? Don't I need to like preserve some of those steps? Absolutely, you need to train your employees. You need to train them. Because one of the reasons why we establish standard operating procedures so I can reduce miscommunication, all right, and you can attain accuracy across board. It means that if you have someone leaving a particular role and someone else coming in to take that place, you know, it will be such a seamless process. So at every point in time, employees must be trained on how the, the SOPs are supposed to be used. Okay. All right, guys. If you guys are open, so please join us with your questions and your contributions. All right, Ms. Isua, so what is an SOP? What are, what are those things that are inclusive in an SOP? What are those um, features that an SOP, a proper and updated SOP should have? All right, first of all, you know, it must be clear, absolutely clear. So there should be no use of ambiguous words or use of um, uh, acronyms that people might misunderstand. All right, so the SOP must be very clear. Secondly, it must be concise simple enough and short enough for people to understand yet passing across the right message 
all right so it must be clear it must be concise thirdly it must be descriptive it must describe accurately every aspect of the sop all right and every process that you want um the employee or whoever is reading it to understand fourthly it must be accurate it means that it must be updated. You know, there are sometimes our processes will change, all right? As we do our business, you know, there are sometimes we change processes or we improve on a particular process. So our SOPs are not created to remain obsolete. They are created to actually be updated. So it's not a document that when you have once, you know, you go keep it somewhere and you just continue to use it. Over time, you must update your SOP so that it's accurate. So first I said it must be, it must be clear. It must be concise, it must be descriptive, and then it must be accurate. Okay, now, is there a restriction on size when it comes to SOP, size of business? For instance, now, if no. I'm into hairdressing, do I need an SOP? Absolutely. Every kind of business needs a standard operating procedure. All right, and it needs to have these things documented. All right, now, you know, the reason why many businesses, you know, fail that five-year mark, all right, and do not transit beyond that is because many businesses are not properly structured. SOP is just one structural aspect of businesses. Mm -hmm. Every must be structured effectively for it to, you know, um, leave out, uh, leave the owner, all right, for it to become a legacy. And SOP, standard operating procedures, is just one of those many structures that a business must have. So whatever it is that you do, whether you're in the entertainment industry, you are in food, you are in clothing and textile, you know, whatever it is in consulting, you're in education, every business must have standard operating procedures. All right, now, for instance, now, because I want to really understand um, all this. Now, for instance, I'm into cake making. What would be my SOP? You know, I need to know those things that I need to document as a cake maker. Okay. All right. Now, in cake making, there are certain procedures, all right? And um, one of them is kneading. So there is a kneading process. I mean, from saving the flour to putting your dry ingredients to putting your wet ingredients, the step-by-step -step process, what, how, uh, how the cake will be made must be documented. All right, now, some people will say, oh, wouldn't I give up my secret recipe? No, you don't have to. So you can call your secret recipe anything. So it can be that at a particular point, you add secret recipe A. Nobody needs to know what secret recipe A is, all right? But your staff need to have a step-by-step -step process uh, about each process and how it will be accomplished. Okay, if so I, I have all that written down, question. sorry, if I have all that written down, shouldn't I be scared of um, my um, secrets? you know, being out in the open. If I have to write all the all processes right. down. Yes, so for every business, there are basic steps and there are basic procedures. However, the secret ingredient, come, where, where the secret ingredient comes in is where we, we express our own mastery. And that's why I said, for instance, you know, whatever secret ingredient is being added all right, let's, let's take a KFC for instance. There is no way that KFC will be able to have branches all over the world if they don't have standard operating procedures. And this has enabled them to produce the same taste of chicken anywhere you go in the world. All right, that's simply SOPs at work. All right, so there is a way that that process is documented and nobody mm -hmm. has been able to duplicate it. Okay. All right, so that's we, where- We I have a question about, from Ugochuku uh, from Lagos. Um, Right. Gochuku from Lagos, we have a question from him. He's saying, I wish to know if the standard operating procedure is a borrowed one from another country or if it was ideally customized for us. All right, standard operating procedures cut across everywhere in the world and it's just one of the ways businesses are structured. All right, it's not about Nigeria or a particular country. It's just the way businesses ought to be structured. Okay, okay. All right. So, um, still in the, in, okay, we have another question. Um, he says, my question is, is it every business that requires written standard operating procedure? Ola Emi from Ketu is asking. Absolutely. Still the same, yeah. Every business requires standard operating procedures. Every kind of business. Standard operating procedures are not just limited to big businesses. 
all right? Small businesses also ought to have standard operating procedures. And I like to give the example of a little baby girl. When a baby girl is born, she has the ability to reproduce. However, those reproductive organs are not in full, you know, are not, are not, are not working fully yet because she has not attained the age of maturity. It's the same way when a business is set up, every aspect or structure for that business must be set up as well, even though they are not functioning fully. But there comes a time in that business when you actually begin to function fully. However, if you wait for when you know you're going to have the business big enough to accommodate structure and all that, it means that there are many things you will not be doing right from the beginning. All right, now, can I compare an SOP from a business that is operating as mine, that is like mine? Can I compare SOPs or, for instance, if I'm in the same business, you know, on business. So if I'm in the same cake making business with my neighbor, must I have a sta the same standard operating procedure as she? Okay, so you are in, you're in a cake, in the um, business, you're in the cake yes. making industry, all right, you're a baker. Yes, your, your procedures will be similar. Your procedures will be similar because you're in the same industry. All right, so it would differ maybe here and there, but your procedures would be similar. I didn't, I didn't get to talk about the general components of SOPs. So for instance, there are general components of SOPs that will cut across all businesses, all right? However, specific organizations have, uh, specific industries would have, you know, some parts of their business structure that might not apply to another. So for instance, general aspects of SOPs would include finance and accounting, mm -hmm. would include sales and marketing, Will include customer service, will include procurement, will include production. All these aspects of business cut across almost all businesses that are mentioned already. So it's important that you know businesses are structured according to what is critical to quality. Remember, I mentioned CTQ. Every aspect of your business that is critical to quality must have SOPs drafted for it. All right. So an um, SOP is very important and all that. And then we must always have um, something that, I mean, we must always put it down. Now, can it be stereotyped? For instance, right. you talk um, about how upgrading. Do you... How do I know when to upgrade an SOP? As soon as your processes change, you must upgrade it. So as when do... soon as your processes change. OK, so each time I upgrade, I make sure that I communicate same to my employees. Absolutely, yes. It's very important mm -hmm. so that you can maintain standard. Yes, right. and this communication as well. Okay. So you have dealt with businesses over the years. What has been the response when it comes to SOP? How how, how important wow. has they, you know, um, put in SOPs in their businesses so far? All right. All right. Usually, you know, in communicating with entrepreneurs, uh, many people do not see the immediate need for SOPs. And I always get the question, well, I'm just starting business, you have to have SOPs and all that. But by the time I begin to explain the importance of SOPs, they embrace it and they say, oh, I, now I understand why I've been having a lot of stress with my employees because I keep saying the same things over and over and over and over again and they do not seem to understand. So, but at what point do we begin to write down these processes? Is it before we begin to execute them or even or in the process of executing them? So, at what point can we write it down for the, for the SOPs to be effective? All right. So, I would say that the moment an entrepreneur begins to think about starting a business, they should start a documented process for standard operating procedures. So, Lude, all the aspects of business, which um, is accounting, marketing, production, and for those that are going into in, that have products and all that. So, yes, in the case where I don't, I am not, um, um, I am not literate enough to know how to document these things. Can I involve a third person or a second person? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. A third party can help you. Yes, you can. So, in doing that, I would. You can get as in writing your SOPs. Okay, so in doing that, I can still preserve the uniqueness of my business because that is the most important thing that I'm trying to do, to conserve that thing which is peculiar and which is special about my business. Yes, yes. 
So it doesn't mean that if you bring a third party in to help you draft an SOP, you lose the essence of your business. No. All right. And that's why I said it depends on um, the professionalism of the people running the business or the entrepreneur running the business. Okay. So you have a secret recipe to you or a secret procedure or process or something, then you must have a way of considering that even in drafting your SOP. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Isua, for coming on the program today. That was quite informative. Thank you so much. And thanks to all those who asked questions and contributed. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we'll come back, it will be time for our sign out. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Quickly apologize for that. And I hope um, you will join us same time tomorrow, same station. And of course, remember that I'm your host, Cindy Eze. All right, until tomorrow when we have yet another exciting and interesting topic to discuss, remember that your business is our business. Thanks for tuning in.